This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting cyberpunk video. Today, we're taking a look at a Netrunner build I'm calling the Mad Hatter. Let's get to it. Gain control over the minds of your enemies with the Mad Hatter Netrunner. Ping to spot your targets. Upload cyberpsychosis to watch them group up and cause chaos. Execute suicide to cause them to execute themselves. Laugh as it spreads and causes panic. Not loud enough? Use detonate grenade and enjoy the fireworks. Clean up any survivors with system reset. With this Netrunner build, you control your enemies and the battlefield. We're going to start this video off with taking a look at where to get all of the armor pieces that I used for this build. You don't have to use these armor pieces. You can just use whatever you want, but I put together a themed set for the build. Something to keep in mind here, don't go for any of these armor pieces too early. They're not going to go anywhere. The earlier you go for them, the lower armor value they're going to have on them, which means you're going to have to spend more resources to max out their armor value. If you wait till your near end game or, for example, you max out your intelligence, by that point, you're going to be high enough level that they're going to have a higher armor value because the armor scales to you. All the armor in the world that you find, it scales to your character level. So it just saves you resources. Like if you're cheating or whatever and you don't care, go get it now and just, you know, dupe your resources and level it up to each piece's max. But if you're playing legit or you don't have access to cheats or you don't know to dupes or any of that stuff where they fix them because you're watching this video in the future, just level up your character with whatever armor you can get a hold of and hold off on getting these legendary pieces because it's going to save you a buttload of resources. It gets really expensive to upgrade armor and you're going to want to max the armor value on this armor. Okay, so to get the suit, we are right here on the map at this mega building, mega building H2. Once you teleport here or fast travel here, you're going to turn around here and you're going to run straight down the stairs like so and then you're gonna follow along this way come down here and then we're gonna come over here and we're just going to double jump over this pipe if you can't double jump you can run around this way and run over but it's super easy to just if you got double jump which you probably should at this point anyway uh, and then we're gonna crouch down in here and we're gonna walk through the plastic and we're going to take a look at the suit. So uh, you should have four mod slots. We only got three. Now, before you do this, you can you can save and re-roll it that way. Or you should be able to run 150 meters away and run back to it. So we're going to try that. I'm just going to run up the stairs here and make sure we're far enough away from it and that it's unloaded. And then when you load it back in, it should have a different set of stats. So I ran all the way out over here to uh, this building here, and now I'm just going to run back. And you can see now, now we only have one mod slot. So we had three, and then we went to one. That's still not good. So like I said, you can do this uh, either way. You can reload the game. That will reload it. But I know some people have long reload times. If you are one of those people, it may be faster for you just to run back and forth. So you only need to run out of render range, which is 150 meters. And then you run back, and it will be a, well, it will be the same item, but have new stats. Okay, so that only took me two tries. Two tries, and I have uh, the four mod slots that you can get on this thing. We only got 183 armor, but that's fine, so we're going to go ahead and loot it. Okay, so our face item, or eye item, is out here in the middle of Bum F Egypt. You can see where I am here. I put a marker in the road. I wanted to put a marker on the actual thing, like, but it won't let me, like, even though I click like crazy. Um, but that's it right there. Uh, you can take this one here, the fuel station. You can come here and then travel straight down the road to the, the little building right there. And let me zoom further out so you can get a better idea of where the location is. Okay, so once you're here, that building over there in the distance is the building. The reason I'm so far away from it is because if you run to here, you can re-roll the item if it doesn't have the right amount of mod slots on it when you first run up there. So once again, you can either 
quick save, reload the quick save, or just run away from the item. And if we run up to it, now be careful because if I, well, I'm, I'm not close enough yet. Hold on a minute here. Let me get a little closer. There are landmines here. There you go. You can see the landmines. So don't, don't set off the landmines. There's a bunch there in the front. We should be able be able to come to the side here and be all right and you can see it just showed up there the item just showed up so this should have three slots or should be able to get three slots now we only ended up with one so i'm going to just run back out here and run back in and re-roll it until i get three slots Okay, and finally, I had to re-roll this one like freaking crazy to get it. Probably, I don't know, I lost count, probably 10, 15 times. That one took forever, but there you go. You can see that it can get three slots, and you also get the cold-blooded shard as well to up your cold-blooded skill, which you're probably going to need points in. So there you go. You can grab that and apparently a silk jacket as well, plus a bunch of grenades. Okay, so to get the boots, you're gonna teleport to here. So there's the fast travel spot. I'll back out so you can see, and that is in Rancho Coronado. So teleport to here. And then once you're here, you're gonna run straight up the sidewalk here. These are super easy to get to. Once you come to the end of the sidewalk, you watch out for the exploding trash because that's always fun times. Walk up here to this police car. That's one of your, that's like your first marker to know you're in the right spot. And then you're going to walk up the stairs here and then you're going to walk up the stairs like that. So uh, there's the police car. Just come up the stairs, hang a right, get to here, hang a left. And then if you don't have double jump, climb the ladder. If you do, just jump up. Or if you do, you can run over to here and just jump up like that. Uh, if you got to climb the ladder, just climb the ladder. You can see, you can see, you get it. And then there's actually two pair of the boots here. If we can uh, get them to show up. So both of these guys have boots on them. We may have to pick up some of the stuff here. Don't worry if you have to pick up some of the stuff. As long as you don't pick up the item off the body, it won't affect the roll. So we can uh, grab that money there and then we should be able to see the boots there we go we can see the boots and i'll show you that it doesn't affect the roll if you pick up the stuff around it it's just the body you can't you can't touch the body so you can see we didn't get it on that one and he has a second set on him as well so we will grab that and then there was the boots and that one didn't get what we wanted either we want three slots they should have three on them so we're just going to run away and then come back. So I found the easiest way to reset these is just run along the dam here. It's the nice straightest path that we got. So you can just run right along here. Once you get up to here, it's super easy because you just run to the other side and then run back. All right, and there we go. We got three on that one. So we can go ahead and loot those. And then what do we get on this one? And we got three on, we got three on both of them at the same time. That's not bad at all. Okay, for the hat, we are at this clothing shop right here. You can just come to this uh, quick travel point. Clothing shop's right here, and uh, you can see where we're at. We are in Carter Hill. So you're going to come into the clothing shop here, and she sells this style hat. So if she doesn't have it, just pop outside, skip time, go back in, talk to her, see if she's got it. If she doesn't have it, pop outside, skip time. Go back in, you get the idea. You just keep doing that till she eventually sells you the hat. Um, you may have to do it for some time. She may not have the, she may have the hat and it may just be like not the right color because you don't want the green one. You want the purple one. So we're just going to go in, skip time again. And uh, she, she will eventually have it. There it is. So that's the one you're after because that one is the dark one. It matches the color for the rest of your outfit, allowing you to look like that. And we look awesome. Okay, to get the blueprint for our rifle, you can see where I am here on the map. I'm at this waypoint right here. So you travel to here, and then what we want is this suspected organized crime activity. So we're going to head towards that. Okay, so here we are at the location, and I jumped up on the roof over here, pinged everybody so that you can see where they're at. So there's some over there, there's there, two there, one there, 
and then there's one over there. So you're gonna need to take all of them out first. And then be careful when you're taking them out because there are some here that can show up. I don't know where these guys come from, but they're never here when I initially get here, and then all of a sudden they're here. So I don't know if they drive in, teleport in, or what, but uh, keep an eye out for these guys. Don't let them sneak up behind you. So then once you've taken them all out, you wanna find the leader, this lady right here, and she should have the crafting spec. So there it is, crafting spec for the breakthrough. And she could end up anywhere. Um, I don't know how mine ended up here, but uh, yeah, that's the lady that you want to take out. She's the one with the crafting spec. Okay, so to get the free memory boost, we're going to come over to here on the map. You can see there is Assault in Progress. We are at the bottom of Westbrook. And there's a group of Arsaka people here that you're going to have to defeat. And then once you've defeated everybody here, you're going to walk in here and there is a dead Netrunner corpse here. So then we're just going to grab the, well, there it is. Okay, so we're just going to grab the memory boost off of that. Okay, so to get this mod, you are going to come over here. We're in the Glen. So right here, you can see where we're at. And then there is a little baseball bat assault in progress mission right here. That's where you're going to head to. And you can see where I'm at there. There's a way in. You could probably go up in and around some other way over there, but I'm just going to go in this way here. I assume this is the way you're supposed to go. I mean, we might be able to double jump over there, but I'm just going to follow through this path here. We're going to take this guy out first. And now that he's out, we're just going to go around this way here and then jump over these. Now there's going to be a bunch of guys all over around here and I'll ping them so that you can see them here. And then they should all start to highlight there. You can see them literally like all over the place. So we're going to take all of them out before we go in there. You can go about doing this however you want. Okay. So then once you've taken everybody out, you're just going to come through right through here and then go through here, collect all of the stuff that they drop. But what you want is this box right here. And you can see there it is the X disc. So we're just going to grab that. That completes the job. And then that's it. Okay. So we're right here at the north side east and you can see where i am here on the map i'll zoom out for you quick travel right to the east location quick travel point right there what we're after is this assault in progress right here so you're just going to run down the way here right to it it's right close by and it's right in there to get to it we're going to run around the side here if you have these people here just take them out and then you're going to come around here and then there's going to be a bunch of people in here you're going to have to take them out as well all right so once you've taken everybody out you're going to run to inside here and then you want this box right here and there you go there's the crafting spec for the armadillo mod so for crafting your armadillo mods, what you want to do is just spam craft a whole bunch of them. As many as you, just, just a ton, just craft a ton of them at a time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go over to your backpack and you're going to make sure your mods are selected. And then you're going to sort them by quality. Now, just get rid of all the other ones to scrap back to get your resources back. Because if you look, we get six and three for crafting one of these. We get six six common and three uncommon and if we come over here to our crafting to craft the thing it's five and one so you actually end up net positive crafting a bunch of these because the only ones we're after are these and depending on when you decide to do all of this depends on what the armor on these are going to be it's so high on mine now because of my level the level the amount of armor that you roll on them is going to be based on your level so i'm just going to go ahead and scrap all of these and the same thing with the green ones and the blue ones because you have no use for those either and the blue ones are actually going to not only get you common and uncommon back but you're also going to get rare components back as well and then you're just going to equip all four slots of your netrunner suit with your purple armadillo mods then you're going to do the same thing with the hat you're just going to put the armadillo mods in the hat as well now we lucked out with our Ocu set here. We ended up with two bully and one Fortuna. Now we know that the bully doesn't stack, so I'm only going to replace one of these 
with one of our mods. I'm going to leave the other bully and the other Fortuna on here. Now, if you want Fortuna and bully mods, you don't necessarily need them for this build. If you didn't luck out with like we did here, just fill it with Armadillo. It's not really going to make any bit of difference for you because you're hardly ever going to be shooting anything. But if you want them, you can go over to your crafting and just craft hats if you have hats or any of your chest items. All of those will have a chance to have the that mod on them and then you can scrap it and get the mod off of them. So for our shoes, I lucked out as well and got an increased movement speed of 13 on them. I'm not worried about the fall damage, so I'm actually going to replace the fall damage mods, even though those are good fall damage mods, with the armor as well. And I'm going to leave that zero drag on there. And with all that, even leaving some of those mod slots empty and not wearing any pants or wearing any outer chest piece, you can see we got over 3k armor. Now I do want to point out that I am wearing the subdermal armor, which gives me 200 armor. You need a bunch of points in body in order to do that, but you can do that. You should have points left over because I did not spend all of the points that I acquired on this build. I have a bunch of points in body, so you could replicate my same build here, or you could take your extra points and put them elsewhere. So when you first create your character, this is what your skills should look like. Okay, so let's go over all the details of this build, including the stats, where you want to spec, and all of that stuff. So let's start with the cyberware. The most important things that you need for this are this cyber deck right here. And I'll show you where to get that here in a minute. The X disc, which I showed you how to get a free one, but if you want to upgrade to the legendary one, you can. You're going to have more than enough RAM, and you're never going to have RAM issues. So, I mean... This is just if you want to show off. You don't necessarily need this one. You do, however, want to make sure you get the RAM upgrade and the memory boost. Now, I showed you where to get a free memory boost, and you can get the RAM upgrade the same place you can get the X disc, and that is from this Ripper dock right here. If you take a look at where I'm at, I am right here at the Weston Apartments, and that's this Ripper dock right here. So you go in here. He's not going to have any of that stuff because I already bought it all from him, but I'll show you. So you just come in here. For those of you who do not know about him, and then you that's the guy, you just buy it from him. You will have the free X disc, so buy the RAM upgrade from him first before you go buying the X disc. But before you buy anything, you want to buy this right here. And where do you get that? Well, you want to come on over here to this point right here, the luxury apartments, and it's this ripper dock right here. I'll zoom out, you can see that I am in Charter Hill, and you're gonna come right over here to this Ripper Doc. Interesting note, this Ripper Doc is actually based off of a real person. She's a DJ, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, she will have it. You are going to need 29 street cred and 35 grand in order to buy it from her. It's not too bad uh, cost-wise, but you wanna make sure that you have this first before you buy anything else because this is that's the reason i showed you where to get all this free stuff because this is the most important thing so i wanted you to be able to save your money for this before you go buying everything else so you will have this you will have the free x disc and you and once you buy this you can actually run this build without the memory or the ram upgrade the ram upgrade is just helpful but you're going to get so much ram back every time you take somebody out that it's not super necessary so as soon as you save up 35 grand you want to come buy this beyond that anything else that you want to have cyberware wise go with whatever you want doesn't really matter these things here and this are your most important things. Okay, so let's take a look and talk about our skills here. So we have 20 in technical ability, 20 in intelligence, seven in cool, and 12 in reflexes. Pay no attention to body. Body is going to do us no good. I only have 12 points in it because it's how I use to, it's what I use to level this character. So you're gonna have points left over because of the points that I spent in here. Uh, put those points wherever you want, probably in cool or maybe in reflexes. It doesn't really matter because all you need for this build to work extremely well is 20 intelligence, but leveling up is a is, is a different situation. You're going to have to spread your points out a little bit, and that's the reason that we have 7 in cool, 20 in intelligence, 20 in tech, and 12 in reflexes. So let's take a look at where we have everything specced, and then I'm going to talk about leveling up your character and where you want to put what points first. So here in Assault, we have this. This is it. This is all we have in Assault. That's it. Over here in Crafting, Crafting is a little different. We have Crafting almost all the way filled out. So all of this stuff here, 
is in crafting. Engineering. Here's what we have in engineering. Intelligence. Here's what we have in breach protocol. Quick hacking. Here's what we have in quick hacking. And in cool, the only one that we care about is cold blooded. And this is what you want in cold blooded. This is just going to further increase our cooldowns. Okay, so let's talk about leveling our abilities. So first off, you're gonna wanna level your tech ability. Focus all of your beginning levels on your tech ability because you wanna get it to 12 as quickly as possible. You should start off with it at six, so you only need six points to get it to where it needs to be, and that is to allow you to craft the epic items. So that way you can craft your sniper rifle because the sniper rifle that I showed you to get, when you get it, it's going to be an epic item. You're gonna to need to be able to craft it. It's going to make life a thousand times easier on you, and I know you're like, Firespark, I thought we were leveling a net runner. Yeah, but there's some things that you're going to need to farm for, and that sniper rifle is super cheap and effective and easy to get and craft in order to do what you need it to do. And I'm going to show you where you can go and you're going to farm for some of the quick hacks that you need and stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do, level up your crafting to level 12. As far as the perk points that you spend in here, you don't even need to spend the perk point to craft the rare items right from the get-go because the rifle is an epic item, so you only need to be able to craft the epic item. I would, however, recommend putting a point in mechanic and putting three points in workshop right from the get-go because all of the weapons that you get, every single weapon you pick up, you're going to want to break down, break them all down, especially right there at the beginning, all of those craptastic items that you pick up, just break them down as soon as you get them. And there's multiple reasons why. If we take a look here in my inventory, this little guy right here sells for a whole 15 eddies. Wow. However, we get 11 common crafting components and four uncommon crafting components. The common crafting components sell for five each. The uncommon crafting components sell for eight each. That means the uncommon crafting components are going to get us 32 eddies and the common crafting components we get from this bad boy are going to get us 55 eddies. Together, that's a total of 87 eddies. On top of that, the crafting components don't weigh anything. So what you want to do is break down every single gun item, whatever that you pick up right from the get-go if it's below 100 eddies. So once you get crafting to level 12, then you're going to, and you get the grease monkey and you make your rifle, then you're just going to come over here to intelligence and you're going to start specking all of your points into intelligence until you get intelligence to level 20. As far as your perks go, focus your perks on your quick hacking first and then breach protocol. So the main one that we're after here is the daisy chain and you can get that as soon as you put a point into your first point, because you're going to be at six, then you put one point in it, you'll, you'll be at seven and you'll be able to unlock your daisy chain. Then you want to max out daisy chain as quickly as possible. And this one right here, you can get this one as soon as you hit level 12 and you only need one point for it. You also only need one point for forget me not. And then you need three for daisy chain. Everything else from there, it, it it doesn't really matter too much because if you have this one, you have this one, and you have this one, you can immediately start using your quick hack setup. So just to show you, I've stripped all of my points from this character. You can see here, you, you definitely need this. I mean, I figured this one was a given. You need this one so you can recover during combat. And I'm using the free cyberware that we got. I just have this in here because you can't, you can't unequip an implant. Once you have something in that slot, I can't figure out how to get it out of the slot. So anyway, uh, we, we, that's just in there as a placeholder. So this would be like a new character. I have this, I have this, and I just got my cyber deck. And the reason I tell you not to get the hacker's manual or the school of hard hacks is because you don't need to. All you need is the hacker overload and the Bart Moss legacy because you can buy all of the other level ones that you need from this lady over here. And you can see where I am here on the map. We can just come over here to Batty's Hotel and you're going to this net runner right here. She's going to have everything else you need. So you just come over here and talk to her and I'm going to show you where to farm the other things that you need. So right here, she's got the short circuit. You're going to need that. And your synapses burnout is right here. And then for a system reset, 
once you have those two crafting things unlocked, you have it right here and you can just craft it. It doesn't need a base one like the other ones do. So it just starts off as an epic one. So then you just need the 60, 37, 13, and two of the components in order to craft it. And you can buy all of those components from this lady as well. Now, once your build is complete, you're gonna wanna use the Synapsis Burnout for its passive ability. But before then, I highly recommend using Reboot Optics. So at this point, you can start relying more on your quick hacks than your actual rifle, but you're still going to need your rifle for some things, and I'm going to show you that. But first, I want to show you the quick hacks. So for the first thing you want to do is always just ping them. That way they are affected by a quick hack. So once you do that, now all of them over there are affected by a quick hack. And because everything already spreads, you're good to go there. So if we do something like suicide, we're guaranteed suicide will spread. We have the proper cyberware to make sure that when they die, we're immediately just going to get all of our RAM back. Now we're only left with that dude over there and we can just use system reset on him. And from there, you're good. Now you're not optimal because the final build is optimized and is just beautiful. But this, as you see, does the job. Now we have to wait for our RAM to recover, but it's recovering relatively nicely. And we, you know, it's fine. It's if we were at the optimized build, our RAM would be full. We would never have empty RAM. But but it's good enough to get the job done. Now, for farming some of these, because some of these you have to farm, the grenade, suicide, and cyber psychosis can all be farmed over here in Pacifica at the main farming loop that everybody goes to to grind for experience. So just come over here to the West Wind Apartments. What we're going to do is we're going to travel over to the apartments here, and then you're going to come up the stairs here. You're going to take out that group of voodoo boys right there because they're going to be a problem for you if you do not. Now, they can have the quick hacks. So if there's a net runner here, it is possible for them to have the quick hacks as well but we did not get lucky on that front on this one. So what you're going to do after you take them out is you're going to come out here in the middle of the road. Make sure that you have your rifle. Now I went through and I cleared all of my skills and I crafted a purple one. You don't need the legendary one to do this. You can do it with the purple one. It just has a basic scope on it. It doesn't even have any mods on it because I want to show you how easy this is because these people that were after here, so those there, and those there will both have a net runner, and that net runner can drop the quick hacks. This is a great way to farm experience for you this early in the game while you're doing this and farm street cred. So if you do not have the street cred to be able to get your cyber deck, because while doing it, you're going to farm street cred and money and everything else. So what you're gonna do is we're just going to get all the way back. So just come down the, the road here, Stand right here and then move in close. Keep checking, move in a little closer. Take a look, a little closer. Take a look. Okay, there they are. Now we're still missing one, so there should be three there. So I'm gonna move just a little bit closer. There we go. So now they're all in view and those are all in view. Now, all we have to do, pick the net runner, which is that guy right there. Don't charge. You don't need to charge it. You can charge it if you want to and attempt to get a headshot, but you don't need to do all that because we don't even have anything specced into this thing. It's not going to do the most amazing damage that it has the capability to do, but that's fine. It's just a good early game sniper rifle. So now all we have to do is just shoot that net runner and we're just going to keep shooting that net runner because he's eventually going to try to hack us. And if he does try to hack you, just shoot him because if you shoot him, It'll screw him up and he won't be able, look, he's trying to hack me. Oh, he can't hack me. You poor thing. And there he's dead. Now, if you take a look, the other ones should be stuck there at the stairs. Let's take a look here. Or they could just disappear. That's also an option. I don't even know where they went, but they, they disappeared. That's fine. So now we're going to do the same thing. That one right there at the, on the railing, that's your net runner. I think the problem is, is we were just a two tiny bit too far out of the way. Oh yeah, look, they came back. Okay, so now I can show you. So let me try to show you here. Oh, we killed her. Okay. Um, she should get stuck at the stairs. Yeah, see, so that's what they do. They never leave the stairs and they'll just bounce back and forth right there. That's the reason you can come here and do this at low level without being able to one shot them. So we're just going to reload and then take her out. And there we go, she's done. So now we're gonna go for this one here. 
and we're just going to shoot that net runner and make sure that oh, oh there he is okay so we need to we got time we got time we're good we just need one shot on him and that'll disrupt him okay there we go he's disrupted and then we're just going to continue to fire at him and they can't hit you from here because they're trying to shoot you from here with shotguns yeah i know and that's it so you're just going to do this and i know it might be boring it won't be boring for too long because i'm going to show you how to make it not boring so once you're done taking them out don't run up there immediately and grab the stuff what you're going to do is you're just going to run back to here about to this lamp post here i think should be good maybe let's go back just a little bit further so we'll run back to here and then we run back down to this lamp post here and now they're back and they're back and you just keep doing that once you kill a bunch of them then go up there and loot all of the stuff break down all of the weapons and see if you got your quick hacks so the weapons are breaking them down are going to be a really good way to get money and i'm going to show you why so if you don't have your cyber deck yet and you're over here farming them and you're breaking down all of the weapons that you get from them you come over here to the sell thing and you click on the all and you come over here and you just look for, I find it's easier if you sort by quality because then you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and easily find your uncommon components. So you're just going to sell a bunch of them. Look at that. I sell, let's just sell, I don't know, almost 2000 of them. So just shy of 2000 gets me nine grand. And you think, well, holy crap, fire, that's a lot. 2,000 common components. If you're breaking down every gun that you get over here while trying to farm for the quick hacks, you are going to have a ton of components. So once you have the detonate grenade, that's the main one you're after. This becomes a ton easier. So at this point, you have your cyber deck. You've saved up enough money. You've gotten it. You've picked up your two free cyberware components for your frontal cortex. I'm going to show you real Real quick how this works so if you have detonate grenade you're golden because they should all die once you upload it so we want to make sure that we don't get seen so we're gonna just ping him real quick he's been pinged and then now we're going to do detonate grenade and there you go they're all dead from one deton detonate grenade now if you have suicide it's a little bit different um, you're going to probably be left with one. Hey, don't notice me. Stop noticing me. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to ping. And then once they're pinged, we're going to go over here and we're going to do the suicide. Now, lower level, this is going to cost you a lot more to do this to them. So keep that in mind. So then once they've done that, then you're just going to take out your rifle and then shoot that guy. And there you go. So and then you can, that'll speed your farming up a little bit faster. So once you've done that, then you can start doing the whole route. So we have three right down here. This time that we didn't kill them right from the beginning. So we can come over here. You can do the same thing to them. You can either do the, if you have the grenade, use the grenade. I didn't ping them first. It's You want to get in the habit of pinging them first so that they have the stuff on them. Because if you are leveling your intelligence and you have this one, which you should have this one at this point, it's going to make it cheaper to cast the stuff because they're going to be pinged. They're going to have the quick hack on them. So there we go. The grenades almost take them all out. We got the one lady left. Is it going to kill her? Nope, but one shot will. There we go. And she's done. So then we can check. You can see we got money from taking her out as well. Now we only want to farm voodoo boys for this. We don't care about anybody else. We're not doing this for anything other than than the quick hacks and the voodoo boys are the ones that drop the quick hacks so then we have a group up here we can do the same thing uh detonate grenade is on cooldown i am however going to ping them first that's the net runner let's ping somebody else they're a little more expensive to ping for some reason so there we go you can see he's three if we try to ping him he's five so don't target the net runners so we'll ping this guy here He's been pinged. Fantastic. And then now we can just use suicide and we'll just shoot the last one. 
and there we go and then we'll look to see you get the idea then once you have your intelligence maxed out you can finish off your build by putting the rest of your points in tech ability and reflexes that's going to make the rifle that you got insane just absolutely nuts if you decide you want to mix it up a little bit and not quick hack for a while and then you want to put your couple points in cool uh that's just going to reduce your cooldowns even more and your cyber deck should look like this you should have the legendary ping legendary detonate grenade legendary suicide cyber psychosis system reset and synapsis burnout the reason we have these is they all synergize so if you look at the passive ability on this one defeating an enemy with an explosion reduces the ram cost of your next ultimate quick hack by two stacks up to four times causing an enemy to panic reduces the ram cost of your next ultimate quick hack by two enemies under the effect of a quick hack will no longer try to avoid inflicting friendly fire that one that one's just there because cyber psychosis is fun and it can help you group up enemies so that your stuff can spread to them if they're too far apart we're not really after the passive on that one synapsis burnout this one is another passive that we we have in here to synergize defeating an enemy with a quick hack causes nearby enemies to panic so remember this one if they panic it reduces this one causes them to panic defeating an enemy reduces the ram cost of your next ultimate quick hack by one stacks up to six times that's how you can get cr the casting cost of only one so the first thing you want to do of course is you come up to a set of enemies you take a look at them and you ping them so that makes sure they're all affected by a quick hack then the next thing you can do is suicide that's going to immediately lower the cost of the rest of them when they die plus if you watch my ram it's going to get me a ton of ram back my ram's full again and then i can come over here look at this they're all they're all only one casting cost now and then we can just system reset for her and that's an instant kill pretty much everything you have on your cyber deck is a one-shot kill with the exception of ping obviously cyber psychosis and your synapsis burnout the synapsis burnout can be a one-shot kill if you do like detonate grenade they're really low health but not quite dead you use the synapsis burnout and that will cause the enemies in the area to panic which will get you reduced casting cost even more and obviously the cyber psychosis is just there to cause them to group up your detonate grenade pretty much gonna one-shot kill most people suicide of course that's instant two deaths and system reset is an instant kill well, it's not an instant kill, but it doesn't kill them. It just puts them down. You can actually run up and shoot them again. If we run up here to this lady, uh, which one was it? Was it this one here? Yeah, she's not dead. We can actually shoot her and kill her. So, and then if you want to make the rifle absolutely insane, craft a whole bunch of the purple version, then turn all of those into the legendary iconic because you need the purple ones in order to make the legendary iconic ones. Then just go through and craft all of those into iconic and then pick the one with the best stats. If you take a look at the one I have, have here it's insane the main things you want to focus on here are the charge multiplier the crit damage and crit chance it, everything else is great but doesn't really matter too much like we got a good headshot multiplier which is fantastic if you can get that great but there's other things you can do to increase your headshot damage that charge multiplier is big especially when you take a look at how we spec our stats in engineering we're only focusing on maximizing the damage from that weapon in a one-shot situation so we have things that allow us to hold a charge permanently so we can charge it up it charges for more and that damage is even more so if we say managed to actually hit that lady which we did not so let's try again with a full charge you don't even have to full charge you can only you can do like a half charge if you want and still do stupid amounts of damage the problem with these is when you do the full charge they shake like insane there you go that wasn't even a full charge we did we did some pretty good damage there you don't even have to this thing is so op that if you just give it a, a minimal charge you can do stupid amounts of damage there you go 34,000 I'll try to get close enough to do a charged shot and ma manage to hit them there we go we did <laughs> we did insane insane amounts of damage okay so hopefully you all found this video helpful and informational I tried to jam pack as much information as I could in this build guide so that you could start off and know how to play through and get to specific points and where you should be when and all that good stuff so that you could actually like legit play through as that character and not just you know here's the skills that I specced into so hopefully you found it helpful if you did 
did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other guides and other good stuff. And I don't just cover cyberpunk. I cover all kinds of different games. You never know when I'm going to be covering a game you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite career Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.